Hello, we are the Association for Child and Adolescent Mental Health, or ACAM for short. My name is Jeff Halperin. I'm um, a developmental neuropsychologist or developmental psychopathologist. I study mostly ADHD, um, longitudinal work following children over time, um, of course the lifespan. Um, also very interested in non-pharmacological treatments and interventions for children. So I actually published my first paper in JCPP back in, I think it was 1990. Um, it was just a research note, but I was, I was thrilled that it got into JCPP. That was a very exciting thing for me on, on aggressive and non-aggressive children with ADHD. Published in the journal over the years, and I was thrilled about three years ago, maybe four years ago, when Edmund asked me to join the editorial board. Of, of the journal um, and, and get involved as a joint editor. Um, it's been a great experience um, and it's gotten me much more involved, of course, with the journal as you'd expect. And, and I'm just amazed at the quality of papers that come in, um, the influence that so many of them have. Um, and what makes JCPP really unique, I think, relative to many other journals, is that it's not just solid empirical research, but there's really a focus on, on the need to be theoretically important. Um, and and the, if, if it's a good study with interesting findings, great, but, but what really comes to JCPP are things that are going to move the field and drive theory, and, and I think that's what makes JCPP so special. I mean, the journal was, was really the key, but there were several papers that really did influence me a lot. I mean, some of the paper, early papers by, by Michael Rudd are clearly um, highly influenced my thinking about things like comorbidity and how that plays out. Um, Robert Plowman's papers on behavioral genetics just opened up a whole world to me of things I didn't know about. Um, and, and really wonderful papers and papers that I wound up eventually while I was teaching assigning to my classes to read. Many papers from JCPP I used to assign to my classes. So there, are, there are a bunch of just classics out there. Oh, these people are great. You know, at this point, I've been doing this for several years, so I know these people, but they never cease to amaze me. I mean, we sit in a room working together as a group, generating ideas. Um, what are the kind of reviews that we want to do in the future? Where do we see the field moving? What are the papers that we think will be important for moving the field forward? And just everybody jumps in with great ideas. Um, just really, and, and, and a group of people who are truly invested in the journal and really wanting to make it one of the best journals in the field. Um, and, and to sit with them, it, it's just wonderful. And Edmund runs a great, great job. I do, I think, I think it's essential, and I think it's been true of the journal for a very long time. It is, I think of it as a British journal, in a sense, but for me as an American living in New York, I always, for the last 30 years, have thought of it as one of the top and most important journals to publish in and to read and to keep up with um, the literature. And I think it's a very international journal. I think one of the things we didn't get into yet at the meeting, but we will this afternoon, is really how many papers are coming from all different countries around the world. And it really is a truly international journal. And even to the extent um, where as an editor, um, you really want to reach out to some of these countries where you don't get a lot of research and, and really want to try to bring them in and, and the lesser heard from worlds if you want. Um, and it's great to see that and get that in the journal. Yeah, I mean, clearly quality is important. Um, getting papers from developing countries is 
is key. I think there are a lot of unaddressed mental health problems in developing countries, although they certainly don't have a monopoly on mental health problems. We have them all over the world, in the UK, in the US, throughout Europe. Um, but to the extent that, that historically, perhaps, the mental health problems in those developing countries have been largely ignored, um, if we could shine a spotlight on some of that, that can really help a lot and help a lot of people. Ah, that, that becomes an interesting question for me because I just retired last year. Um, so I'm still writing, I'm still working, I'm still working as an editor, but I'm also spending a lot of time playing tennis and bike riding and doing all kinds of fun things I've finished with students. But, but I'm still collaborating with a lot of people. I have a very large data set um, that a number of people are working with. Um, and, and I'm involved with them. So I'm still writing papers. I'm no longer, as of six months ago, taking the lead on, on studies anymore, but I consult a lot and co-investigate with a lot of people. But I'm in the middle of this major life transition at this point. To be part of the advancement of child and adolescent mental health, visit www.acamh.org.